and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in a heavyweight division. The judges, Steve Weisfeld, Don Nodecker, and George DeGabriel. The timekeeper de Bell is Cecilio Tito Pedraja. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout, referee Wayne Kelly. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the multicolor trim. He tipped in at 238 and three-quarter pounds. Professionally, he has 20 wins, only one loss, with 15 knockouts. The 1988 Olympic gold medalist. He is currently ranked number four by the IBF, number eight by the WBA and the WBC. From Newark, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, here is Merciless Ray Mercer. Mercer. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the purple trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 234 pounds. This fella has 18 wins, nine losses with 13 knockouts. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, boxing fans, here is Jesse, the boogeyman, Ferguson. Ferguson. All right, Ray. All right, Ray, Jesse, we're boxing under the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. I expect a clean fight, obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, take hands. Boxing is about. Second, second down, let's go. All right, so it is Merciless Ray Mercer. Getting ready for uh, a tune-up for his expected title shot in May against Rick Bo, if all goes well for Bo tonight against Michael Dooks. And the veteran Jesse Ferguson, kind of a professional opponent, is the opponent for Mercer. Question for Mercer, George, is has he polished his boxing skills since the embarrassment of his loss to Larry Holmes when Holmes demonstrated all of Mercer's inadequacies both as a defender and as a tactical fighter. There's uh, something that has to be said about a guy with creases in his boxing sense. <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to be sharp from the bottom up. <laughs> Jesse Ferguson told me before I met him earlier today, he said, I don't want to be known as a star in boxing, which means he's going to really try and win this fight today. I saw Jesse Ferguson for the first time in 1986 against Mike Tyson. That was the fight after which Tyson said, I was taught when throwing the uppercut to try to drive the nose bone into the brain. And he doggone near did it with Jesse Ferguson. It's been a rough road for Ferguson ever since then. And he landed a good straight right hand right on the side of the chin of Mercer this time. Mercer just seems to not mind being hit. Mercer with a powerful left hook drives Ferguson back into the ropes. But you're right, even against a relatively slow-fisted puncher like Ferguson, Mercer remains an open target, George. It does. And uh, sometimes when you fight a guy like Mercer, you don't try to knock him out anyway. Just get the points. Don't upset it. Jab him, roll right hand, move out of the way. Mercer a little short with a right hand over the top. Merciless Ray Mercer. Fell in love with his punching power early in his career, and because of it, maybe didn't learn as much as he should about the niceties of boxing. And to be honest, he's a late starter, 26 years old before he ever got out of the amateur ranks. Sometimes it makes you smarter. You remember Kenny Norton got started late. Went on to become one of the smartest heavyweights of all time. Ferguson has been hit hard by some of the hardest hitters in the, in the ring today. So it's not going to intimidate him with just power. He has to do a lot of other things. Oh, there's a solid right hand by Ferguson. But, and another one. And the sweat flies off of Mercer's head. Ferguson hits him right in the mouth. And there's a little bit of blood around the mouth of Ray Mercer. He seems to function like this. Bleed a little bit, hurt a little bit. But I'm coming on later on. Those kind of punches that the boogeyman is hitting him with early. <laughs> they take a lot of power away from him for the little round. 
Jesse Ferguson, who is an opponent for the for the man who is supposed to be a future opponent for the present heavyweight champion, Ray Mercer. I imagine that round might have cheered up. All right, second down, let's go. Heavyweight champion. Ray Mercer, we're told by punch count statisticians, through 65 jabs in round number one about round four two. times his normal jab output. So he's practicing his jab tonight. Getting ready to jab with the jabber when he fights Bo. These are very body. important body punches. When you're waiting to come on later in the few, uh, latter rounds, you don't allow the guy to hit you in the body because you won't have the power later on. And uh, Ray Mercer is allowing himself to be hit in the body a little too much. Mercer is not going to get a knockout. Fighting like this? I mean, you, he's not having to worry about it, but those body punches are doing more damage to Ray Mercer than the headshot. And Ferguson landed another long right hand and came back with two or three shots to the body. It has certainly been no Mercer walkover so far. The break, step back, clean break. The boogeyman. He's been a professional sparring partner for a long time, Jesse Ferguson. So he's been a, what you call a punching bag for a lot of guys. It's not going to disturb him to be shook, rattling rolling. Has he been in your camp? Never. Never had Jesse. But he's been in Tyson and a few other guys. Carl the Truth Williams. Jesse, let him go. Good, 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 good. Ferguson working almost exclusively to the body now. And he comes up with the left hook. Mercer reduced to hitting the top of Ferguson's head and not doing that much damage. And at this point, Mercer's behind on points. Yeah, I would have to think so. You just can't depend on knocking a guy out all the time. Though he's weak, Ferguson is weak, hasn't had a lot of wins, but the garden can bring something out of you that's never been brought out of you before. Mercer is so open and easy to hit that Jesse gulls him with one of the oldest tactics in the book, looking at the chest and firing at the head and getting away with it. That's what he, exactly what he's doing. Exactly, it's a trick. It's a gym trick, right? Oh, right. gym trick. <laughs> but he's been paid by managers and trainers to go to work the body, that's all. He's come, become a real pro at being efficient at throwing right hands, whatever you describe or prescribe, he goes out there and do it. Now Mercer gets in a couple of right hand shots and gets the fluid to flow from Jesse Ferguson's nose. But when Mercer goes inside, he leaves himself open and Ferguson comes right back with body shots. Good left hook, good right cross from Jesse Ferguson. Ferguson continues to stare at Mercer's chest and hit him in the chin with startling effectiveness. If Ferguson is in, is in condition, he can make a lot of people very nervous during this during this fight. Merce, people in Mercer's corner and and uh, and Bo's corner and Riddick Bo's people. Landed some good head shots. Mercer is covering up his head. He's he to the body. Got it? Okay. Take Jesse time, Ferguson man. has okay. been around the block a few times. Right back in the ball game. Always finished with a punch to the body. 
Jesse Ferguson could uh, weed Ray Mercer out of the ranks. He might just speed up the championship fight timetable of one George Foreman. Push George along a little bit in the rotation here. Well, with two champions, everybody thinks if he makes a good showing, he's going to have a shot somewhere along the way. And it's, it's inspiring everybody to get out in the morning and run a few miles, George. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Think about Jesse Ferguson. He went to his corner this time after being ahead. Landed a lot of punches. He just seemed enthusiastic. It's like, I got him, I got him. He just sat there as though he doesn't have a lot of belief in himself. Is that a sparring partner's mentality? I think so. It's like, hey, I'm not going to win this. you got to feel like you're going to win. Good right hand that opens the door. Boy, that was a solid right hand by Ferguson. But, you know, maybe he doesn't get excited, George, because he's had the experience of being in fights and not getting a break from the judges. He is the one who's expected to lose. Now, Mercer's going to start bleeding on that uh, left side pretty quick if he don't keep his hands up. You don't have to be hit with a solid shot, just constantly being touched in the same spot. Mercer trying to take a page from Ferguson's book and lead over the top with the right hand. Jesse goes back to the body and now comes upstairs with the left hook. Body, body, left hook. Not bad for Ferguson. Mercer putting more pressure on now. You just walked into this meeting, you didn't know which one was which. You think the guy in the purple trunks is the one they, were, they wanted to fight in May. What, exactly what it looked like. But I think he's falling prey to just staying in there, trading shots, keeping your head in there for this guy to hit you with some short shots. That's the old spar partner. Let's talk a little bit. He's trying to love. Ferguson. Ferguson is starting to exchange conversation. It's like, I'm just far in time. Ferguson rocking Mercer with the right hand to the body. And he's talking to him. Yep. He is basically talking trash now to Ray Mercer. He's saying, you ain't got nothing. And that really intimidates a young guy with experience. You know? Mercer's not young, but he's young as far as experience is concerned. Yeah. Well, that left hook is going to last for three rounds right, right, Clean break. Step back. Good. Ferguson with a little blood around the right nostril. Hard-working Jesse Ferguson. Comes out east of North Carolina, grew up in the tobacco field. You learn to work long and hard. Well, the fight is starting to turn a little bit now. Mercer's been able to hit some hard shots now, taking the effect on uh, Ferguson. Yeah, who hasn't had a lot of fights in recent years and maybe expected to run out of gas pretty easily. Jesse probably didn't come here expecting to do this well. He may be thinking to himself now, I wish I had trained a little bit harder. We're going to get tired of him. We're going to have a deep breath. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to touch him. Go ahead, Hank. Let me work him. Two. Fuck it right here. You just, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just tap him. You don't have to. Don't let him time you with his jab. Bring him back up. Come right back over the right hand again. Touch him. Touch him. You know what I mean? He's slow. He's slow as hell. Yeah? He's, he's slow. But you're waiting too long. All right, you know I'm second time. Don't right? let him time you with the jab. Right? I don't know if Ferguson's excited, but the people in his corner are. So maybe that'll transfer to him. Round four. Harold Letterman, shall we take a look at your scorecard? What have you got, Harold? Jim, 30 to 27, three rounds to none, favorite Jesse Ferguson. I think he's the busier guy, the effective aggressor, landing the better shots at Ray Mercer's, just fighting a lazy fight. I think Ferguson's stealing it so far. Break, clean break. I've got it exactly the same way. <laughs> at some point or other, being a professional sparring partner started to rub off in your life too much. You just don't go for it. And I think that's what's happening to Jesse Ferguson. There was a time he could have went for it, and he just didn't. 
Well, maybe he'll find the motivation to keep landing punches like that. He just bounced two jabs off of the face of Ray Mercer with absolutely no opposition whatsoever. Mercer doesn't really try to block punches. It's not a part of his routine. No, no, he seems to enjoy being hit. With Rocky Montana, sometimes he, he didn't mind because he knew he was going to be hit a lot anyway, so it doesn't hurt you as much. Jake Lamotta enjoyed being hit. But all he said was, Joe Frazier was disappointed if you didn't hit him. <laughs> <laughs> and if you missed him, he got upset. Ferguson landing over the top of the right hand. It would be so easy for him to cut Mercer if he keeps landing like this. One of the things we're forgetting here is that I don't think Mercer's in great shape. I don't know what his best weight is, but 238 seems awfully big. He was not a super heavyweight when he fought in the Olympics. He was a heavyweight. He weighed down around 200 pounds. So he doesn't have the real, real heavyweight power, but he is very strong. And here he's, he's obviously not, not done a lot of his homework for this fight. That's right. And one of the things Ferguson screamed in his ear a few minutes ago, a few rounds ago, he said, you didn't train for me, Mercer. You didn't prepare for me, Mercer. <laughs> All right, quick, 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 quick. I think Mercer said, you're right. <laughs> if he didn't, he was lying. Oh, right hand by Ray Mercer. Didn't seem to hurt Ferguson all that much. He tries to come back with a right of his own. The one area in which Mercer has an indisputable edge, he's the harder puncher. That's right. And sometimes you can hit on the top of the head with those shots. Though you swing back, you're really hurting. All it takes is two more well-executed shots to drop it. And Mercer got hurt that time. That was a good right hand by Jesse Ferguson. Boy, if this is a, an easy fight, which it's supposed to be for Mercer, I don't want to be in any hard. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, this ain't real business. I keep, you ain't how you doing? Shit. Way to work. This ain't, this ain't real business. No, no don't worry shit. about that, Jess. Look, Bullshit. you keep boxing him, keep boxing him. I want you to sit down on your hook, right? This time, double the hook. Double yep. the hook, right? Yep. Halfway point. Work his body. Start with the body, then come to He's pulling back on you. So you got to stay close to him working his body. When you move him back, he just stand him back and he's pulling back. Before you start punching, make him move back, then you start punching. I'm going to have to box him a little bit. Give him Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't see the monitor because my monitor is dead, and they say they can't fix it until after this fight. Round five. All right, round five begins. Jesse Ferguson and Ray Mercer in what has so far been a little bit of an unexpected battle in the sense that Jesse Ferguson seems to have had the tactical advantage, certainly has landed punches more regularly than Mercer and has outlanded Mercer with power shots, 102 to 35 by punch stat computation. Mercer gonna have to hope that with his superior power, he can wear Jesse Ferguson down. I think it's a little too late for that, but Mercer is showing a good enough jab. I wonder why he didn't use it earlier. Why do you think it's too late for him to wear him down with power? Because uh, he may be behind on point. And uh, I mean, he's using his left jab, but it's something he should have been doing earlier. You have the judges on your side. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of late to pull the judges out now. You got to go for it. Clean break, clean break. I'm going to step back. Otherwise, you can hear some booms if you get a decision. He's actually boxing Jesse Ferguson. This is not supposed to happen, but a good sharp right hand. But not only that, you know, even if he pulls this fight out first, if he doesn't start to look better, the media is going to absolutely trash a Mercer bow fight yeah. off of this. And it's one thing to be booed, and the media is here because there's a heavyweight championship fight coming up. Right. And, and this is a Madison Square Garden. He's, he's supposed to look good in this. Not just win it, but look good. Test everybody how he can give Riddick Bo a battle. And he's not fulfilling that prerequisite at all. So it's not just winning here. 
If he, win, if he wins ugly, that ain't that <laughs> ugly for him. <laughs> and it's been ugly so far. <laughs> we're not going to tell the media about this. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it is one thing to be booed out in a third floor room in a casino hotel in Atlantic City, which is where Mercer would normally be fighting at this stage of his career. But to be booed here would be a whole different trip. All of this has come about because he was he allowed this guy to hit him in the body with those sneaky shots early on. And you just don't have that reach down and go get him power later. He's trying to wake his body up and trying to get his, get his strength back together. Yeah, but what's happened here, George, is that is that Mercer is backing off the Ferguson. That's what he's he he supposed to be the other way around. And he has no choice because his power is gone. He's hoping for one burst in the next couple of rounds to get a pick up. So his power's been negated by Ferguson's body punching. And to reduce the boxing, he doesn't have the tools to deal with even a rudimentary boxer like Jesse Ferguson. Right. And if he had not allowed him to get hit, up, hit him with those body shots early on, it wouldn't be like that. Now he's winning a battle of the jab. He's doing a ah. good fight. And he caught Jesse with a short right hand to end round five. But Ferguson appears not too much the worse for wear as he walks back to his corner. He's He's coming nice and you use a jab, but you're not throwing the right hand. As soon as you get him, get him come at you, let that right hand go. Straight right hand. Don't go. Is that got to fight him though? Yeah. Okay. Don't let him. You can run. You make him run into the right hand. Okay. okay. Because you got him coming. When he's coming, you jab, 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 then right hand. But don't load up on him. Just let it go. Don't try to kill him with it. Okay. Just let it go. And he'll be there. Okay. Yeah. All right, this is becoming a different kind of fight now. Mercer, the boxer, against Ferguson, the brawler. Ferguson throwing those two punches. Just now in his corner, Ferguson. Come on. Yes. He's going to run now. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Well, the theater of the unexpected. Jesse Ferguson finds himself in tactical control against a Ray Mercer who was scheduled to whack him out of here en route to a heavyweight title shot against Riddick Bowe. Now he's been given instruction Mercer has by his corner to move and circle to his left and draw the guy to a straight right hand. He started off and threw the right hand too quick. Now, Jesse Ferguson knows exactly what he's trying to do. He's too wide. Now if he starts backing off and jabbing, he's not going to fool it. Oh, there's a solid left hook by Ferguson. Mercer, though, once again, appears unfazed. And, hey, let's face it. If he can take Tommy Morrison's left hook, he can take Jesse Ferguson's left hook. Now these kind of shots snap you and take your vision away momentarily. You don't want to be hit with too many of them. You don't get knocked down. You can't see very well. This is a little shot. Landing long shots. And Mercer completely changing his style. The power puncher, Mercer, has thrown twice as many jabs now in the bout as power shots. It seems to me all of the guys celebrate too quick. You see the whole family in town, everybody's hanging around them. It's like a big celebration. They come in and fight not prepared for a real war. Well, you know, when Mercer fought Larry Holmes, he blew a shot at the title against Amanda Holyfield. Everybody in the world thought Mercer was going to win. He loses. And he is in real danger here of blowing another shot at the time. And guys, on a night where Jesse Ferguson dominates Ray Mercer, I guess you got to make Michael Dokes even money against Riddick Bowe, right? Ray Mercer's count on one good right hand. He's counting. Oh, got to be there. The last time he landed a short right hand against Ferguson, Ferguson break, shook his head and smiled as if to say, nope, that isn't going to get it. You know, it's interesting that Rock Newman, who has been brilliant in matching Riddick Bowe to bring him to the point to get a title, has now matched his next opponent with a guy who just might make him not his next opponent. Boy. It just shows he knows his own fighter. Better than he knows right hand by Mercer and uh, by uh, Jesse Ferguson, and he tried to finish up with a hook, which is really bold. I think this has been Jesse's best round. 
I mean, he's been winning the other rounds, but this one he's winning clearly. Oh, oh there's a good left hook. Mercer's holding on. You tell a fighter to throw a right hand, hit him, but you don't ever try to tell him to come back with three and get out. And he's feeling his cheerio. Round six, all Jesse Ferguson. Well, here we see Jesse Ferguson once again, the long shot, throwing long shots and landing them. And he's throwing combinations as well. He's starting to feel not like a sparring partner. Here's that flurry at the end with a clean right hand. And in Mercer's corner between rounds, Mercer, he's got to win by a knockout. And he's got to go after this guy now. Well, if you believe Harold Letterman's scorecard, that is exactly the case. Harold, he's run out of rounds. I think, I think he's out of rounds. I mean, he's behind six rounds to none, 60 to 54. He's going to have to do something sensational to pull this fight out. It's all Jesse Ferguson. And by punch stat numbers in round number six, Ferguson lands the 22 power punches, only four for Mercer. The one thing about it, you can get too overconfident with a good puncher. You start finishing up with hooks, and the next thing you know, you're getting off the canvas. That's yeah. what be happening with Jesse Ferguson. I think Mercer's talking to it. Forget about the three. I think Mercer's talking to him now. He's saying, "What are you doing in here? I'm supposed to fight for the title in two months." Ferguson's shot begin to have a little more vinegar in it. He's punching harder, George. Yeah, he could make a mistake. But this guy survives and thrives on being here. Sometimes when you're 238 and you're looking for that little extra energy, it is not there. Jesse's got to remember to defend himself, even while getting happy at how easy it is to hit Ray Mercer. That's right. And Mercer's corner told him to go out there fighting. He just didn't have enough energy to go out there fight. He should try to talk back to this guy. Just forget about the conversation. <laughs> Ferguson is saying, I know it. <laughs> Maybe he told him before the fight, oh, you know, it'd just be a little working. Huh? Tricky fighters will do that. They'll tell you, don't hurt me. I'm just going out there to make this money, okay? And he said, okay. And the next thing you know, you're on the camp. There is a famous fight movie, or at least a great fight movie, called The Setup. My Robert Ryan. With Robert Ryan. He was supposed to lose, and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we're watching the setup with Jesse Ferguson, right? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> the Mercer is saying, oh, look at him. Come on, man. Don't do this. I think maybe Mercer's trying to make a deal with him. That's now. what he's trying to do. <laughs> Seven rounds down, and a very nervous Rock Newman watches from ringside as Jesse Ferguson tries to obliterate the best laid plan of Newton, Bo, and Mercer. No, come on. Now Ferguson got to just want to sit down. He's ready to quit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Do it, baby. Do it. Come on. He's got to win the last two. Give me the grease. Come on. I got him. I got him. Come on. He's over here. He's over here. Finish strong. Stay in his face. Hey, 
You in shape, Jess? Why the gloves off? Why the gloves off? I'm proud of you. You in shape, Jess? Hey, he's quitting. Ferguson is actually quitting the fight. He's trying to quit. He's trying to quit, and his corner is, uh, is telling him that he's in good enough shape to stay with him. As Jesse, is this, right here we see in this last round that this outrage. We see, well, what do you think? Is Jesse going to take the fall? Jesse yeah, Ferguson, that was a foul guy, believe me. He is the leader star. Is Jesse Ferguson run out of steam? No way. Is that what we think? Oh, he's crossing Mercer. A double cross. I'm not sure he wanted to quit, George. I think he's just very, very fired up and excited about his sudden chance to win this fight. Ferguson may be thinking about all the years when he didn't get the kind of referential treatment. You think they're trying to make a deal in there? You think Mercer's still more of a part of his championship fight, George? I beg your pardon. They better, they better, they better, draw, they better draw up the papers. <laughs> I think it may be too late to negotiate with Jesse Ferguson. I think Ferguson is hearkening back to all the years when he didn't get the kind of preferential treatment that Mercer has gotten all along. Remember, Holmes was supposed to be a setup for Mercer and a stepping stone to a championship fight himself. You know, at this it's a shame when a boxer starts trying to be a promoter. You know, at this point, guys, all jokes aside, even if Mercer would just somehow come on and stop this guy or the guy who had a problem, I think it's going to be hard to make that match against Riddle Clark. Now, this is too embarrassing. I mean, telling him he's taking a whooping. Jesse yeah. Ferguson is telling him no deals. No deals. I'm firing. Yeah, I've been paid by many managers to work by this this time. I'm winning. Mercy's is talking to him again. Hold on, hold on. Whoops. Crashing. Please. Just the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. Rock Newman is probably the thing. Rock. Left for me. Let me find my face in thee. Six minutes. This is jump in his fucking face. Come on, this is you got two more nine. rounds. Nine and ten. Come on, Jess. Right? Second down. This is go go. twenty rounds. Six minutes. Come on, Jess. Six minutes. Come on, Jess. Upset. Go. Upset. Six minutes. Six Come on, Jess. Famous cry of Angelo Dundee <laughs> in the first Ray Leonard Tommy nine, Hurts nine. fight. Give now six a quarter minutes, sure. son. That's right. <laughs> Mercer going back to the jab, which has served him so neutrally throughout the fight. This has got to be a gigantic test for Ferguson. Because he's worked 
by instruction so many other fighting managers and trainers to do what they do what you're told so much how can he at this point change his life and bring a woman to a probably his greatest test well it's a matter of pride you suspect a chance to go back to philadelphia with his head held high for once in his life Disobey. Oh, you are tough to lose. You're going to be happy for Jesse if he gets this decision, George? Yeah, because it has changed the attitude of a lot of fighters out there who've been sparring partners who've allowed guys to whip them because they were told to win. He's crossing over into new territory. He's always had the ability, but he just had this bow down spirit. He's thumbing his nose at the boxing establishment tonight. It's just proving that Ray Mercer would be a tough guy, but an extremely, extremely limited guy. We've watched him since those 88 Olympics. We've seen him time and time again get into wars with, with other fighters who weren't supposed to be in there with him and eventually wear them down. He got in with a sparring partner who's been in there with some of the hardest hitters in the world who's accustomed to being knocked around. He's not going to panic because you don't hit the floor or you recuperate. That's what he's been paid to do. He's there trying to make a deal. Let's make a deal. If you're going to make a deal, you got to be able to close. And I'm not sure that Mercer has a closer anymore. Ray Mercer has to, has been told repeatedly in his corner that he has to stop this man, and he doesn't even appear to be trying. He doesn't have the power because of the earlier body shot. That's right. Stepped it away from him. Doesn't have anything. George, you spotted that in the very first round of the fight. You told us what was going to happen if he kept taking body shots. Because they didn't hurt him, he was not aware that he, he was being robbed, robbed of all his strength. He just didn't know. In that experience. And because he's not in shape. Beauty. Beauty. One more, baby. Beauty. One Come more. Here. Come here, baby. Sit down, down and down. take a rest. You deserve it. One more. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. We want to stay on our way now, right? Now, this, this is the last round we're This is the time I want you to double up on the hook. Double up on You can't miss him. He's there all night for you. Right? Ferguson is sad because he's, he's breaking tradition. He can't be happy about this. Right, I'm going to get it. You got to have it, man. Man, I can't. You got to have it, boy. Come on, bro. You're Head up, George. George, you're telling me that Ferguson is sad because he's winning the fight. Don't be a man. Yeah, he's breaking tradition. He just wasn't supposed to do it, and he's doing it. And he's sad. Could it mean the end of his career? Does it mean that he won't get the kind of bookings he's been getting for the past few years as an opponent? It's just something that happens inside of you. He's made a deal with himself, and he can't do it. You know, I heard Mercer say to his corner, Watch him up. Man, oh, man. Step back. Last it's like round. he spent, he got nothing left to spend. And Jesse and Ferguson it. stood up and saluted the crowd and pumped his fist. And the crowd behind us stood and cheered. They know what they're watching. And now you have three minutes of drama. Three minutes in the career of Jesse Ferguson, professional Let sparring partner. Let him go. Let him go. And it's kind of sad because Jesse Ferguson knows that he's crossed into a different territory. He'll never be considered a sparring partner and a nice guy to get into the ring with. But he'll he'll never time, get these shots as an opponent again. Never. He may not get the same kind of paycheck. Well, you can believe Riddick Bowe won't take that chance with him. The thing about sparring partners, they become in the ring trainers. They know everything. Well, it was too easy, George. I mean, how could he not have won this fight? It was right there for him from the beginning of the fight. Just perfect. Mercer just didn't believe he crossed tradition. Great tradition. He just couldn't believe. Well, and Jesse just decided that he couldn't be that bad. That, that, that as bad as he would have to be to lose to Ray Mercer, he wasn't going to be that bad tonight. 
Blood streaming from Mercer's mouth. Ferguson still better be a little careful. This guy has power. He's got power everywhere. Well, he's had power at times in his career, but now he's backing up and throwing jabs in a round in which he needs a knockout to win. Mercer is thinking, how much time do I have to get out of danger and get a knockout? He's got less than a minute to change his life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't well, you can't score knockouts throwing these pawing jabs that Mercer's throwing. He's not trying, George. He just doesn't have the power, just enough to get himself hurt throwing the jab and getting countered. He's thinking about getting countered over that right hand now. Yep. And he took all those body shots early in the fight, and it took a lot more out of him than he suspected would be the case. There's the left hook as he tries to do it with one punch. There's another one. No zip on it. businessman in Ray Mercer's life shouting 20 seconds Ray and Mercer has nothing to respond with it's all Ferguson down the stretch close the door for a final round rally for Ray Mercer well these are the moments that make us love this game it's just a, a triumph of spirit and will. Do you want me up there? You want me up on the ring apron? Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, we've got the scoring. Judge Don Nothegger observed 96-94, while Judge Steve Weisfeld, he watched it at 99-91. And Judge George DeGabriel, he observed 97-94 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jesse, Jesse. Ferguson.